Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Guru Dev to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudi Guru Prabhupada. And finally, I offer my pranam to Anandi Tadandi Padagan and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis.
There are two ways by which a devotee attains bhav, perfection. One is Kripa Siddhi, where the Supreme Lord, in his Leela, he just bestows perfection at once upon a person. Srila Prabhupada used to say, this is like an honorary degree. <laughs> you cannot expect to get one, necessarily. Most of the people, they'll have to actually go to college and do the work. Huh? So, some person, sometimes they may receive honorary doctorate in some extraordinary circumstances. <laughs> but generally, persons, they'll have to study and get their degree, their MA and PhD. So, the other way of becoming, attaining perfection is Kripa Siddhi. Sorry, Sadhana Siddhi. By performing Sadhana, one attains the Bhav, which is Sadhana Abhinivesha Ja Bhav. Ecstatic mood, which has appeared due to Sadhana Abhinivesh, absorption in Sadhana. So, one should not think that everyone, everything depends upon oneself. Because Kripa is also there for those who attain Sadhana Siddhi. Our sadhana, part of our sadhana is singing so many bhajans. Like, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu, Doya Koramora. Oh Mahaprabhu, please give mercy to me. So, Kripa mercy is there also in the attainment of the sadhana siddhi. So, it's to be understood in this way. Just like one Brahmana was traveling. And he came, he was invited to stay in someone's house. So then that host said to him, If you want, I will cook and I'll give you the prasad. Otherwise, I can give you the, the rice and the uncooked rice and dal and water and salt and vegetables, all the ingredients. And you can cook an offer and then take prasad. So, in this analogy, the Kripa Siddhi is like the host saying, I'll cook everything and just leave it. And Sadhana Siddhi is like, I'll give you the ingredients, but you have to cook yourself. Hmm? That means you have to do something. But unless the host had provided you with all the ingredients, you couldn't do anything. So there's some Kripa. Mercy also involved in the perfection by uh, Sadhana Siddhi. Now, this Sadhana Siddhi comes from one attains Bhav, transcendental emotion, which is called Sadhana Abhini Vaisha Ja Bhav. The Bhav which Ja, which appears as the Devotee is in the stage of Abhinivesh. Avesh means absorption. So it's extremely important to try to be in that stage of Avesh always. Absorption is so powerful that mm, when he said, Avesya tadakam hitva bhavo tadkatim kata. Sri Narad Rishi, he said many persons in the past have attained perfection by Avesh being absorbed in one Sambandha relation with Krishna. Kamad, that means the gopis by Kam. By romantic love, gopis were absorbed in Sri Krishna. Hmm? Hmm. Kama, 
Kodat. We see that mm, Shishupal was absorbed in anger. So even though it was unfavorable, but he was absorbed in some kind of relationship. And he also was liberated. Dwayishat. Enmity. Kamat Dwayishat, sorry, Dwayishat is the second. Kamat Dwayishat, Bayat. Baya means fear. Kamsa Maharaj. Day and night he was worried that oh, Krishna will kill me, Krishna will kill me. But he attained perfection, he was liberated. So we don't follow Dwesh and the Bhai, fear and enmity, because they are unfavorable for Bhakti. That means by absorption in that you can be liberated, but you cannot attain the sweetness of loving service. So by come, Hmm? Sneha means affectionate family relationship, like the Pandavas and the Yadavas. Yatha Bhakteshray Mana, and Uddhav says, sorry, Naraguni is saying, and others became perfect by absorption in a relationship with Krishna through Bhakti. Here it means Vaidhi Bhakti. Hmm? And Narad is referring to himself. So you have here of the um, five types of relationships. One is Vaidhi Bhakti. Then you have the Dvesh and Bhai, enmity and fear, which is rejected because it's uh, practical. It is not favorable towards Krishna. And it does not bring one to the point of experiencing the sweetness of loving service. So you're just left with Kaam and Sneha, a relation, the affectionate relationship. So, Raganuga Bhakti is of two types, that is Kamanuga and Sambandanuga. So, Abhisya Tadakam Hitva Bhavo Tadikatyangata. The essence is that one must be absorbed in a relationship with Krishna. We see very often devotees are very distracted by so many things. But at least when you are engaged in direct bhakti, chanting the holy names, japa, kirtan, singing bhajans, observing the arti of Thakurji, doing puja, at that time you have to forget everything. It's better to actually forget everything all the time. <laughs> Purva iti hasa bulinu sakala seva sukha paimani silabhakti no tako said in the happiness of serving you Krishna I have forgotten my own history who am I, where am I, what happened before I don't know so this is the best but if we cannot be completely forgetful of everything at least at the time of engaging in sadhana try to forget everything and be fully fully absorbed in that then Progress will come. So, it's not so easy, but you have to try again and again. So that is the effort. And on the other hand, by pleasing Sri Guru and pure Vaishnavas, some kripa, some mercy from them will come to enable us to really enter into a deep avesh. Those who are in avesh can pravesh. Pravesh means enter. So if you want to pravesh, enter into Sri Krishna's Lila, you have to be in Avesh absorption. So, we have a daily sadhana program that our acharyas have given every day. That it, and it begins with the Mangal Arctic in the morning. So, all of our activities of devotional service all our songs and prayers and artis, Mangal Artik and uh, Sandhya Artik and so on, they are all extremely deep and they are a very, I want to say rare, you think, oh, Mangal Arti, yes, that's every day. No, it is a rare opportunity after millions of lifetimes to attain the human form of life. And out of so many millions of human beings, 
to meet a sadhu, a pure Vaishnava, and be engaged in devotional service. And then within that to attend the beautiful arti of the Lord. One should approach with extreme humility and extreme gratitude. How fortunate I am that I can have the arti darshan of Radha Govinda. So, in Mongol Arctic, we're singing a very beautiful song that was composed by Lai Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj. And this Kirtan has manifested in his Samadhi, in his trance. It is so full of deep meanings. And it is so charming and beautiful because the song that we are singing in, during the Mongol Arctic is very suitable for the beginning level of devotees and also very, very relishable for the highest level of advanced Rasik, Bhavuk, Rupanuga Vaishnavas also. Because he has hidden so many beautiful pastimes and so many beautiful meanings in the verses. So Sri Balabhacharya, he said, Gopto rasa eva rasa tvamma padyate That rasa attains a state of great relishment when it is hidden. Hmm? So rasa should be hidden that the, ge the general people, they cannot see it. And those who are rasik, they will relish so much. So, in the first verse, Param Gurudev is singing, Mangalasi Guru Guru Auspicious. Auspicious. What creates for us great fortune, divine transcendental fortune, is called Manga. So, how does our great fortune arise in our life? Yadritsaya kinapi. Parma Swatantra Bhagavad Bhakta Sangha Tat Kripa Jat Mangal Udayena Mangal Udayena What is the cause of the awakening of auspiciousness in our life? That is the Kripa, the mercy that comes by the association of Parma Swatantra Bhagavad Bhakta The supremely independent, pure Vaishnavas Everyone is tightly bound by the ropes of karma in this world. Hmm. In Brahma Samhita he said, oh, from Lord Indra down to a tiny insect, everyone is forced to walk due to their ignorance down the path of their karma. Karmani neda datikintu chabakti bhajam Govindam Adi But when one engages in bhakti, it's like a fire and burns all that karma completely. So the living entities are bound by their karma, but due to ahankar, they feel as if they are free. But the pure Vaishnavas, they have no ahankar, they have no material ego. So they are free wandering around this world and whomever they meet, blessing them by their glance through their eyes, by their words, and by their praise, prayers. So, Mangala Sri Guru. Sri Guru is auspicious. By the association of Gurudev, our 
the auspiciousness is rising in our life. It is a great transcendental miracle. So Mangala Sri Guru. Sri Guru is very significant. Sri means treasure, wealth. What is wealth? Premadana Bina Pyata Taredra Jivan Dasakori Vetan Mari Deo Premadan. Without the treasure of Krishna praying, oh, I am a beggar. So the only true treasure, the Sri, is Krishna praying. So Mangala Sri Guru. Auspiciousness comes in our life when we have the opportunity to associate with that pure Vaishnava who is filled with Krishna Prema. Prema Bhakti Jahoiti Avidya which destroys our Brahma, all our Brahma, our ignorance, our illusion. So Mangala Sri Guru Gaura. <laughs> Sri Guru engages us in Bhakti as taught by Sri Gaura himself. Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahiyanya Beautiful Nilamani Krishna shining like a sapphire and very soft and gentle Vrishwabhano Nandini the daughter of Vrishwabhano Shimati Radhika these two have combined together in one Mangala, auspicious form of Gaura. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm. No one can express how beautiful he is. Krishna's face, but with Radharani's expressions. Madhu Madarasmita Lobita Tanugritam Anupama Bhava Vilasam. Niduvana Nagari Mohitamana Sadikatikadabasa. That's Gaur Chandra. His beautiful smiling face awakens lobe, greed in the heart of all living entities as he's performing his pastimes of Anupama Bhav in comparable emotional ecstasies. Niduvana Nagari, just like Radharani, is meeting at night in Niduvan. And in her meeting with Sri Krishna, she's so choked with emotion, she cannot speak his, the syllables of his name. Hmm? She becomes gadgad, and so only broken sounds are coming, because she's overwhelmed with love. So, Nidubhananagari mohitamana savikatita gadgadabhasam, just as Radhika being choked with love speaks broken syllables to Sri Krishna so sweetly in the middle of the night in Nidubhan, so Gaura, Krishna himself is in the maddened in the mood of that Niduvana Nagri Radhika and chanting his own name. So Mangala Sri Guru Gaura, Mangala Murati, all glories to the Mangal Murti, the Mangala Murti, the auspicious Murti. That means the form of Radha and Krishna. Especially when they embrace each other, it's like one form. Mangala Murti. Mangala Sri Radha Krishna, Jugala Priti. And what is very auspicious, most auspicious? The love for Radha Krishna Jugal. Visaya Tadiyakade. Shudha Viman Kavya Mahera Bo Si Vrindavan When will my heart be completely cleansed from any inclination towards sense objects? Then I may have the darshan of Vrindavan Rupa Raghunata Pade Vaibaya Kuti you 
When will I be eager to follow Rupa Goswami and Raghunath Das Goswami? Then the possibility will come that I can realize Yugala Priti, love for Radha Krishna both. That means this Tai Bhav always is Krishna Vishayani. Krishna uh, Vishayani Rati. Rati love is always for Krishna. But this love following Rupa, Sri Rupa, is love for Krishna completely pervaded by friendship for Radhika. And that friendship is so pervading the love of Krishna that it has pushed and Krishna, love for Krishna into the secondary position and, and has overpowered it. So that, that is called Bhava Lasarati. That is the Yuga Priti, the love of Rupa Mantri Rati Manji. It's very astonishing. So first we sing Mangala Sri Guru. Gaura. Without the mercy of Guru and Gaura, with no auspiciousness in our life. Mangala Murti. The auspicious form of Radha and Krishna. And what is most auspicious? Without love you cannot relish the sweetness of the form. Kamsa Maharaj, she is Krishna. But she cannot relish his sweetness. Because he, because he does not have love, he is not actually seeing Krishna. Hmm? But Sarpakan Chukabhat, just like a snake, can give up its skin. So, Krishna has a Maya Rachita Tanu, a body made of Maya, which is like the skin of a snake, covering him, and Kamsamaraj sees that. Because he is a demon and he does not have love. Hmm? So, if we don't have love, then really we're not seeing the deity. Without the eyes of love, one cannot really see Vigra. So, Mangala Sri Radha Krishna Jugala Priti, this love is most auspicious. By that, one relishes the sweetness of Radha and Krishna. So then, in the next verse, Param Gurudev is singing Mangala Nishanta Lila Mangala Doye Mangala Arati Jave Vakatari Doye Mangala Nishanta Lila Oh, glories to the Nishanta Lila. Now it has two meanings. One meaning is that, as Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, Yani Shasava Bhutanam, what is night for all living beings is day for the enlightened sage. And what is day for the uh, enlightened person is night. For the ordinary person whose senses are not controlled. So, when the soul is wandering many, many lifetimes in this material existence, this is a state of darkness, of ignorance. So it's like night. And when we come into the association of Sri Gurudev and pure Vaishnavas, this is Nishanta, the end of night. Just as when the night is coming to an end, some light appears on the horizon, the sky starts to become brighter. So in the same way, when we come into Sadhu Sangha, then the light of transcendental knowledge begins to appear in our hearts. And the darkness of bodily identification and worldly existence gradually dissipates, disappears. In Bhagavatam it is said that when we come into Sadhu Sangha, then very quickly our material journey in this world is terminated. So that is one meaning of Nishanta, the end of night. That is the outer meaning. And the inner meaning, Nishanta, is the name of Radha Krishna's Leela. From 3.36 in the morning till 6 o'clock, this period is called Nishanta, the end of the nighttime uh, pastimes. So, 
Mangala Nishantalila, Mangala Udai. Oh, glories to the auspicious awakening. So, outer meaning, the awakening of the soul. Vibhavari Shesha, Aloka Provesha, Nidrachari Uto Jiva. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, Night is over now. The morning has come. Oh, Jiva, you are sleeping. Now, get up. And Bolo Hari Hari, Mukunda Murari. And chant the names of Krishna. Murari. 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 So nice. Can you release his name, Murari? Mura means calm, lust. And Ari means enemy. Krishna is Murari, the enemy of lust. What's the enemy of lust? Love. Atmendri Priti Vancha, Dari Bali Kam, Krishnendri Priti Ija, Dari Prema Nam. The desire to <laughs> to please your own senses is calm, lust, and the desire to please the service of Krishna is praying. So praying is the is the enemy of lust. So Krishna is Murari, hmm? not only an opulent idea, killer of the Lura demon, but Krishna himself is praying Suru. He is the embodiment of Achilles, killer of Samrita Murti, the embodiment of all the rasas of love. So. Mangal Udai, outer meaning, the soul is waking up, and inner meaning, oh, there is an auspicious awakening in the morning of Radha and Krishna. So, Mangala, Mangala Udai, Mangala Nishantalila, Mangala Udai. <coughs> Mangala Arati Jage Bhakata Ridai. Now, Param Gurudev is praying. May the Mangala Arati, the moon, morning Arati of Radha and Krishna, appear, rise up within the hearts of the devotees. Hmm? That one should not just come to the temple room and standing there, looking around the room, fidgeting, looking at other people. No, why have we come? To pray very, very fervently. And by the mercy of our Guru and previous Acharyas, they may bless us that the Mangal Arti, transcendental Arti, will rise up in our minds. <laughs> Oh my Lord, when you are asleep, then all the living entities, Tomara, Nidraya, Jiva, Nidritadra, you hold them within yourself. During the Pralai, the annihilation of the universe, all the living entities enter into the body of Vishnu. So then they're in like a state of suspended animation. But then, when it's time to create again, the Vedas personified appear. Jai Jai Jai, and they offer prayers to wake up the Supreme Lord. And then, the Supreme Lord, he wakes up and he manifests the creation. And all the living beings who are in the state of suspended animation, they all wake up and begin to do their karmas again. This is the the creation. This creation is also nothing but an act of love. Yada sisrakshu pura atmana pura rajasra jatte esha pritakso mayaya satvam vitudyasu ridangsu ishvara saishyamana tamasira yatyaso. Narad Muni has explained that. In the last creation, there were some devotees. They almost became perfect. But they're not ready yet to go to the spiritual world. But they have devotion. Then the creation was over and they were absorbed into the Lord. Then the Lord was thinking, I'm missing them so much. I feel separation from them. I want to accept their service. But right now they don't have any bodies. They don't have any bodies. So Satvam Vitsuchya Ishwara. Because he desired to give them 
There's other forms in which they can serve him and perfect their devotional service. So, Rajasrit Eisha Pratakshomayaya by Rajagun, the Supreme Lord, stimulates the mm, prakriti and psh, the whole creation is let loose. So, the cause to let loose the entire creation is just one thing love. Supreme Lord's love for his devotees. Hmm? That rajas which moves everything comes from the Kriya Shakti of the Lord. And that is causes time. So time, tick, 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 every tick, 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 is what? Love. Hmm? Everything, only the love of the Lord. So incidentally, when he manifests the creation to take the service of those devotees who will become Siddha and come back to him. So incidentally, all those who are in ignorance, they also get another chance. And some of them associate with those pure devotees. And it may be that in the next, uh, after the next annihilation, the Supreme Lord creates for them. Like this. So the, the cycles are going on. But it's only a cycle of love and mercy. So Thomara Nidraya Jiva Nidritadarai Tava Jagarane Vishwa Jagaritai Oh my Lord, when you awake, then the whole creation awakes. Then Shubha Dristi Karo Prabhu Jagate Prati Jagu Oh my Lord, Shubha Dristi Karo Prabhu, please glance upon me with your merciful glance. This is Drip Drisha Vichar. We are not the seers of Krishna. We are witness of the field of activity in this world. But Krishna is seeing us. Paramatma is seeing us. But we want that Krishna, Sham Sundar, Brajanda Nanda, by his own lotus eyes, may open his eyes and glance upon us. And by receiving the glance of Sri Krishna, if you are chanting Hari Nam, and the beautiful moon-like face of Shama Sundar appears there, and looks at you, then the mercy will come from his eyes. And the sadhana bhakti will turn into bhav bhakti. So, shubha drishti karo prabho jagatera prati. Oh my Lord, wake up and open your eyes and glance upon the world. Jagu kari daya mora sumangala rati. And awaken within my heart bhav rati, that is bhav. Chuddha sattva vishesh atma prema suryansu samyabhak. Transcendental essence of Samvit, the awareness potency, and Radini, the pleasure potency of the spiritual combined together should melt my heart. So just as Param Gurudev, he prayed in this way. Then, when we sing the next line, then we change, we go into the Bhairavi Rag. Mayura Sukadi Sai Katapikara Before we were singing in the melody, more like a Padya Padavali um, a folk style. But now, when Rati comes in the heart, one loses external consciousness and becomes completely absorbed now in the beauty of the early, the end of night pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So, the Bhairavi Rag is appropriate for that time of the morning. It embodies the atmosphere of that early morning. What is going on there? Oh. In one beautiful Sanket Kunj in Braja, Radha Krishna, after a very beautiful singing and dancing Rasalila in night, they became tired 
and there reclining, sleeping on a beautiful bed of flower petals in the Nigunja. Their sakis are at some distance, far away, and their maid servants are just close, sleeping just outside the kunj, on their beds. And when the end of the night is coming, then, at that moment, they, the maid servants, wake up with a start, startled. Why? Did you ever have that experience where you think that you've overslept and you're late for an appointment? <laughs> so early in the morning, the maid servants, huh? they have so many services to do. And when they wake up, they think, oh, perhaps I'm late for my service. And they look around. But then they notice, no, it's okay, I'm on time. It's still dark, the sun is not quite coming yet, and Radha and Krishna still asleep. So they wake up, the maid servants, and they look at each other. And they're amazed. Because whatever Radhika is experiencing in her meeting with Krishna, Krishna that is reflected in them. So some certain marks and symptoms around their bodies, which have been reflected from Radhika, and they look with astonishment at themselves and at each other. So just then, they get up and they go and look through the window of the beautiful pavilion, the Nikunj Bhavan, the cottage, and peer inside. That is the Mangal Murti. Radha Krishna in there. How beautiful. Here and there, inside the Nikunj Bhavan, there are so many lamps jeweled of jewels. And on Krishna's side, the sham color, the sapphire color of Krishna is spreading out and illuminating the jewels with the sapphire rays. And on Radhika's side, Jai Sisi Radha Govinda Juki. On Radhika's side, the effulgence of Radhika, like champak flowers, is spreading and reflecting from the various jewels in the Kunj. So at that time, oh, every, all the maidservants have to become busy. Some are making tambu, some are stringing garlands, some are grinding sandalwood and making ointments, mixing with agur, with wood, fragrance. And they're all getting ready for their various services. So just then, the end of the night has come, the bumblebees were also sleeping. So the bumblebees, they wake up. Hmm? And when they wake up, they immediately start buzzing here and there. And as the bumblebees are buzzing, then Brinda Devi, the goddess of the forest of Vrindavan, hearing the bees, Brinda Devi also wakes up. Twadakya palava puspa bringa Mariga di bayamada vakeli kunja Madhva di bayamada vakeli kunja Brinde namaste chandara vingam On the order of Brinda Devi Braj is so beautiful, decorated with the bumblebees with so many flowers and creepers with mm, with so many different types of birds, cuckoos and parrots and peacocks and also when it's needed there's honey, honey wine, very intoxicating sweet honey wine for Radha and Krishna to drink. Everything that's needed for their pastimes, Brinda Devi is managing everything. So when Brinda Devi wakes up, then she's thinking, oh the night is coming to an end, the dawn is coming now. So she tells the cockerel, oh you should. Hmm? So on the order of Brinda, then the cockerel calls out loudly. Hmm? And Radhika hears it, oh, go and grow in hell. Hmm? Because the, the, the calling of the cockerel, that means that the night is over. And she doesn't want this night of meeting with Krishna, it should not be over. So she told the cockerel, oh, grow in hell. So then she listened. There was no hope. She said, oh, mm -hmm. he's gone to hell. Good. <laughs> so now morning has been cancelled. 
<laughs> in her simplicity, she's thinking that the morning is cancelled now because the cuckoo has gone to hell. The sun will not rise. And she cuddles up to Krishna and goes back to sleep. So then Brenda Devi, she thinks, oh, we have to make more birds sing. So Param Gurudev is saying, Mayura Sukadi Sai Katapika birds begin to sing to make an auspicious awakening for Radha and Krishna. The water birds sing, but the cranes in the water and the birds on the land, the peacocks, the cuckoo birds in the trees. Cuckoo birds are called pika. Pika, because they say pika, pika. Pika, kaha means where. Pi means priyatam. Pika, where is my beloved? Where is my beloved? Very sweet. So then, all the very beautiful sounds of the uh, birds are there, and Radha and Krishna slowly, slowly, they begin to wake up. They're so tired they cannot open their eyes. Eyes are rolling. They're feeling around with their soft lotus hands here and there. Radharani picks up a cloth, but it, by accident it was Krishna's cloth. Krishna's feeling. Takes a hold, it's my cloth, but it was Radhika's cloth. <laughs> They cannot even sit up straight, they're leaning on each other for support. <laughs> they stretch. Krishna looks like a bow made of sapphires. Radhika stretches, she looks like a, a bow made of champak flowers. Very beautiful. And they yawn. Oh, mm -hmm. And when they yawn, the rays of their teeth, it's as if the rays of their teeth are doing offering arty to each other's faces. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. at that time, the mm -hmm. Maid servants, seeing that Radha and Krishna are awake, they are ready to do their services and they enter into the Kunj mm -hmm. With the very sweet sound of the jingling of their nupurs, their ankle bells. And then, at that time, they have so many services. They have so many services to perform. Now the parrots are singing. Daksha and Vichakshana. The male parrots, they glorify Krishna. Hey Krishna, you are the ocean of rasa. You are the, you fill the eyes of gopis full of nectar. But now the shanada, the night is over. So you have to get up. The, the, word, the word for night in Sanskrit is shanada. And it's very significant. Because when Radha and Krishna hear the word shanada, the night is over, they think yes. It's a shanada. Shan means a second. And da means gives. That which gives only one second of happiness is called shanada. Because of, out of anurag they feel as if, you know, love is such a thing that in separation one moment becomes like thousands of years. But in meeting, thousands of years becomes kshan, a moment. So the night is shanada. It gives just a moment of happiness. Huh? And also, shana da, da can come from do, da to means to cut. And the word shana can mean a festival. So Radha and Krishna's meeting is a shana, a festival of happiness, and now this night is over and it's cutting. Ending the festival. So the male, and fe the, sorry, the, fe the male parrots glorify Krishna, and the female parrots like Shuba and Shukshmadi, they glorify Radhika. They say, oh Radhika, you are the Shiksha Guru of all the young girls in Braj, in etiquette. So now, don't embarrass yourself. Quickly get up and go home. Otherwise, there will be a big scandal. Don't embarrass yourself. So in this way, all the birds are singing. Such a magical, beautiful scene. So Param Gurudeva said, Mayura Sukadi Sai Katapi Karaj Mangala Jagara Heto Korite Evi Raj Suma Dura Dwani Kori Jata Saki Gan Mangala Sravani Baje Madura Kujan The sounds of the birds mix together and makes a very beautiful 
the sound. Otherwise, it can mean that the sakis, they're talking to each other. And that is also making a very beautiful sound. So, those maid servants of Radha and Krishna, they begin to do their services. First of all, yeah, Rukumanjari and others, they will come and offer Radha and Krishna a very refreshing nectar juice, nectar drink. So Radha and Krishna's eyes are, they cannot open. But when they take this sweet nectar, first drink given by their nerd servants in the morning, <laughs> then the eyes become open. You know, you may know sometimes a person who cannot open their eyes until they have a certain drink. <laughs> so, when this very sweet, strong nectar is given to Radha Krishna in the morning, then they sip that, and then for the first time, beautiful Shubha Dristi, auspicious glance comes, because their eyes are open now. Some of the maidservants, they're taking some fragrant water and a very soft cloth and dipping it and wiping away the various mm, cosmetics from the faces of Radha and Krishna. Because Krishna has Radhika's lip gloss here and mm, some kajal, black kajal from her eyes on his lips and some mm, cosmetics, some chandan, kasturi and um, the mask and so on is smeared on the body of Radhika. So they're coming in with the cloth and wiping away. Mm, just like the pujari in the Mangalati is offering some water and then taking a cloth and offering a cloth and cleaning like this. This is the inner meaning of the of the arti. Another maidservant takes a deep and does arti because arti means that which brings auspiciousness. So they're thinking, oh, I'm offering arti to Radha Krishna. They will now get back to their home without being caught. There should be no problems. No difficulty should come in their life and they should quickly again meet without any obstacles. Mm -hmm. When a person offers arti in a sweet mood, it means, may whatever difficulties are there in your life, I'll let me take all of those difficulties on my head and let you be free from any problems. And this is the loving mood. Some maid servants are then fanning with the chamar. So in this chamar, there are so many hairs, right? So these hairs, these are like the pran. There are 72,000 nadis in the body. So the hairs of the chamra are like 72,000 nadis with the pran. That means, oh, worshipping Radha and Krishna with all their pran. They're not thinking metaphysically, only this is a, a path that they're serving with all their prans just to please Radha. Their only happiness is, lies in Radha and Krishna's happiness. And Krishna's happiness lies in Radharani's happiness, so we'll just focus on her mainly. If Radhika is happy, Krishna is happy. So we focus the service on Shimati Radhika. So just then, the goddess of shyness, Laja Devi, she was sleeping outside the kunj. Understand? But when Lalita and Vishaka and the other, the, the contemporaries of Radhika are approaching and Radhika can hear the ankle bells coming. Then the goddess of shyness suddenly comes back inside the kunj. <laughs> so Radhika tells to Krishna, Oh Krishna, look, I am very disheveled now. <laughs> she has seen her own beauty because one maidservant came and gave Radhika a mirror in her hand. So Radhika took the mirror and looked at her face. And there are some marks on her face from Krishna. And she's so happy. Oh, the bumblebee of Krishna has tasted the nectar of my lotus face. So now, finally, all my youth and beauty and all my qualities have become successful because they've been enjoyed by my Pran Priyatamusi Krishna. And Radhika, she cannot stop looking at herself in the mirror. Not that she's enamored with her beauty, but she's overjoyed that Krishna has relished her beauty. And Krishna looks to Radhika also and sees her, and he's relishing how she's 
having all of these feelings. So then Radhika tells Krishna, I am completely disheveled now and I can hear my sakis are coming. So you should quickly fix everything. Hmm? Otherwise my friends, if they see me in this condition, then they'll criticize me. So then Krishna begins to comb the hair of Radhika, decorate her with flowers and so on. So then when the, the sakis come, the sakis look and they saw that, oh, there's a kumkum on the feet of Krishna. And there's some foot lack, Radhika's foot lack, on his head. So though they, they are not allowed, they cannot come and see the pastimes. Because they are Radhika's contemporaries. They are not that fortunate like the maidservants who are somewhat younger and can stay. But by seeing the various uh, cosmetics, they can reverse engineer the pastimes. <laughs> they cannot see them, but by seeing the various Uddipana, Hmm? The the symbol chain, the marks of the pastimes, they look. And uh, you know, this is the nature of ladies. They're always watching all the little details and reverse engineering everything. Yeah? Yeah? So Lalit and Vishaka they come and they're looking. And they're also looking on the, the way the flowers are in the kunj and where the broken necklaces, where the broken garland is, and looking at everything. And in their hearts they are relishing so much by having some realization of what beautiful pastimes that they could not see. <laughs> so at that time Radha and Krishna, they get up and they come out from the kunj. So our Param Gurudev is saying, Kushumita Sarovare Kamala Kushamita Sarovari. There's a beautiful lake there. Kushamita, and it's filled with beautiful lotus flowers. And the breeze is blowing and causing the flowers, and the breeze is carrying a sweet fragrance and causing the flowers to tremble. So why is our Parambudev expressing this in poetry? This is called Samuchchai Alankar, when nature is reflecting the moods and the activities of the hero and heroine. So the poet has no need to directly explain about the hero and the heroine. It just explains nature. Look, the wind's blowing, the flowers are shaking. And those who are rustic, they can understand. What is this fragrance on the breeze? It is the mixture of the angasura, the fragrance of the body of Krishna, is mixed with the fragrance of the body of Radhika, and it's carried on the breeze. Why are the flowers trembling? Because the Mahabhav, the great love of Radhika, has one characteristics called Yavadashrai Vritti, that it spreads out and affects everything around her, and especially now. Why? Because there is this threat of inevitable, impending hmm? separation. Separation is coming. So her bar is going very high and it's spreading out from her, calling, causing all Vrindavan to tremble. Hmm? When Radha Krishna come out of the crunch, other maidservants quickly run inside. Why? To get all the prasada. <laughs> There'll be some chewed tumble. That brother Krishna some tumble. That brother Krishna chewed and spat out. There'll be some uh, prasadam remnants. There'll be some broken garlands and necklaces. So they go inside and looking on the floor, picking up all the all the pearls to restrain the necklaces mm -hmm. and collect some tumble and some prasadam remnants and very with great excitement. Those maidservants are sharing them among each other and tasting. Mm -hmm. And by tasting those remnants, again they have a spurti, a realization of the moods of Radha and Krishna when they were sharing that tambul with each other, when they were chewing each other's remnants. Mm -hmm. When they're there picking up the broken 
jewels from the necklaces, they can hear the parrots are singing. Hmm? One parrot is singing. Oh, you're hurting me. I am not Hirani Kashipu. <laughs> and listening to the parrots singing this. The parrots always repeat, you know, what they've heard from others. When the parrots, when the, the maidservants hear the parrots singing like this, they are relishing again the beautiful pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Hmm? So then they come outside and it's Radha Krishna now. They're starting to go back to from Sanket Kunj. They have to return to their homes quickly before anyone will see them and there'll be a scandal in the village. So as they're walking, two soldiers are fighting with each other. One soldier is Utsuk, Utsukya, the sanctuary bhava. Utsukya means eagerness, the eagerness to be together. And the other soldier is Bhai, fear, the fear that someone might see them. So these two, the eagerness to be together and the fear that someone might see them are in a struggle. So when the eagerness to be together is overpowering the fear of being seen, then Krishna, as they're walking along, puts his arm around Radha. Hmm? And when fear is winning them, so when Krishna puts his arm around Radhika, then they look, and they're walking home, they look so beautiful that the peacocks in the forest see and think that this is a flash of lightning. Radhika is like a golden flash of lightning on a rain, and Krishna is like a rain cloud. So the peacocks seeing this beauty, they think, oh, now it's starting to rain and they spread their tail feathers and they begin to dance. <laughs> so not only the peacocks have this illusion when Krishna puts his arm on Radhika as they're walking home, but the Sakis and Manjus also see and also have this illusion. As they're walking, they're looking here and there. Krishna sees a tree stump in the distance and thinks it's Jatila. <gasps> and as they keep going, then Radha Krishna looking at everywhere they look, they see thousands of Jatilas everywhere. The mother in law is everywhere and all the trees and creepers. <sighs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So as they come to the edge of the village of Braja, now the soldier of fear overpowers the soldier of the eagerness. And so then Radha Krishna, they let go of their embrace and have one last glance in the eyes of each other. Mm -hmm. And all the Maid servants stand and looking at them, and it's a very, very pitiful scene. And as they separate to go their separate ways, then the warm tears are coming from the eyes of Krishna. Yeah? Tears of joy are cold, cool, but tears of pain, sorrow are warm. So as Krishna is leaving, then warm tears begin to flow from the eyes of Krishna and the faces of Radha and Krishna. Huh? They were shining so much when they were together, but now the faces of both of them, they lose their luster. You know when the stars are in the sky, they look bright. But when the moon rises, then the moon is so bright, the stars lose their luster. But this is very strange. When the stars of separation appear, then the two moons of Radha and Krishna's faces lose their luster. It's a Viroda Bas Alankar. Hmm? How is it possible? Why do their faces lose their luster? Because Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibha Vitabi. Krishna is a mm, vibhav of, for Radhika, stimulates her love. So her Mahabhav becomes very high. Hmm? And Radhi, Krishna, when he meets with Radhika, then, you know, Krishna always reciprocates. So Krishna, Mahabhav comes in Krishna when he meets with Radhika, also. And that's why he has to meet with Braj Gopis, because no one else has this Mahabhav. Hmm? 
Madhya yeah. Shoda and Nanamaj don't have it. Even the queens in Dwarka, they don't have it. Krishna can only feel this when he comes in the association of the gopis. And Mahabhav is such that it becomes one with the nature of the mind and overflows into the senses and the whole body becomes as if made of the Mahabhav. So Radha Krishna is very shining and when they turn away from each other and the warm tears come from the eyes of Krishna, then the face of Radhika becomes pale and the effulgence begins to dim and the effulgence of Krishna begins to dim. It's a very painful moment. Krishna is quickly going to try to enter into Nandagaon and get into his bed and go to sleep before anyone wakes up. And as Radhika is walking with her sakis, she says, she becomes angry with Lalita. Oh Lalita, you gave me a false hope. Because in one day, you said to me, Oh Radhika, I am taking you so that you can sink in the ocean of loving pastimes with Krishna. And saying this, you brought me to the forest, but now you are already taking me home. But you didn't fulfill your promise. Understand? She feels as if she never met Krishna. You know there's a game that Radha Krishna play called Chaupar. You know this game? If you go to some temples in Vrindavan, you'll see they have it like a board game. It's like It looks like Ludo and there are different pieces and you have to throw a dice and then move your pieces. And you have the, the piece, you have to move it around and then you have to come to a safe house. And when it's there, then it's safe. If it's anywhere else, it can be taken off the board by another person's pieces. So the idea is you have to get all your pieces into the safe house. Yeah? But a foolish person will throw the correct number of the dice and their piece will come in the safe house but then they throw again and instead of moving another piece that piece which was already safe that is called the uh, paki, paki goat goat is the piece and then it becomes paka it's just arrived in the safe house right? so it said paki goat kachi kari ye rasakan kiriti rasakan kiriti this is the nature of rasa that when the in Paki Goat, the peace comes in the safe house, then a, a foolish person, they'll throw the dice again, and then they'll move that piece and go around the board. And it, they have to do everything again. So Paki Goat, Kachi Kari, Rasa Kaki Riti. It is the nature of Rasa that that which has become accomplished in a moment becomes undone. <laughs> so though Radha and Krishna have met and read these beautiful pastimes for the whole night, Due to the intensity of the eagerness, due to the intensity of the anurag of Radhika, she feels as if nothing happened. Everything which was accomplished became undone. And so as she's walking home, she's chastising Lita. You promised me, you said you would bring me to the forest to sink in the ocean of love for Krishna. And now you're taking me home. And nothing happened. What did you do? Radhika looks and sees that the sun is rising in the east. She said, wait a minute, I just saw that sun over there setting in the west and now it's rising in the east. What happened to the night? <laughs> Who has stolen the night? <laughs> and in this state of intense praying, they take Radhika and she sneaks into her house in Javat and lies down under the so our Param Gurudev is saying Chanjara Kansa Ganta Shankakaratala Mandala Vedanga Bhaje Paramarasa You see? He woke up very early in the morning before Mangalati and he took his Japamala and began to pray, Shubha Drishti Koroprabhu, Oh Krishna, please awaken Rati in my heart. And he was chanting. And as he was chanting Harina, he lost external consciousness and entered into the Leela of Radha Krishna. Mayo Rasu Kadisari Katapi And so these verses are coming. Now Param Gurudev is present there as Vinod Manjari and seeing all the Leelas, Nishanta Leela of Radha Krishna, is hidden in the words of this song. Hmm? But then, gradually, gradually, for a long time, he was chanting and relishing all this. But then, Panjara Kangsaraga, he heard a bell ring. Because before Mangalati, when Brahmachari comes to the 
Champuru went off, ding, 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 like that. And he came out from his samadhi, from his trance. This purity of the lila was broken. So he got up and Shankar Karatao, the conch was blowing, the cartels were playing, and there was a sweet sound of merdangas. The devotees were singing and doing Mangalartik in the temple room. So then he came to the temple room. But it's very painful when this purity, the realization, is broken. If the pure devotee has entered into the lila, it's a very wonderful thing, but if that is, disappears, then his pain of separation is extremely intense. So then Param Gurudev came to the temple room and Mangala Arati Kare Bhaka Tera Ganga Abhaga Keshava Kare Nama Sankirtan now in sadhak form, in the beginning of the song, he's in sadhak form. Then from Mayura Sukhada, he goes into Siddha form. And then Janjara comes Sarakam. Then this port is broken and he's coming back into the sadhakavesh, the Siddha form. And now he's in the temple room, Mangala Arati Kori Bhakateragan, with all the devotees performing Mangala Arati. And those very things that he was seeing in his trance, the water pot, the cloth, the chamara, all the udipana of that beautiful morning pastime of Radha and Krishna. He's seeing and the beautiful forms of Radha and Krishna and seeing those udipana, then the pastime is awakening again in the heart. So he sings, Abhaga Keshava Koi Nama Sankirtana. Uh, this Keshava, our Sila Bhakti Pragyan Keshavaraj, he feels himself abhaga. That means unfortunate. Because I just lost my whole treasure. But now by doing Sankirtan and having darshan of Takoji's RT, how the Pujari is offering each article. And each article is connected to the beautiful pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So then there is some relief. And he's singing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And Hare Nam is Atasi Krishna Nava, Di Nava Vat Premindrai, Sev Mokhi Jevan, Swayam Eva Sporatyata. It causes again a spurti of Radha Krishna's pastimes. So, when you are coming in the morning to Arti, or now we are about to witness the evening Arti, each one of our Mm, ceremonies that we're doing is extremely deep. Be in Adesh, absorption, absorbed in that. Don't be distracted. Mm -hmm. If outside, what happens, a dinosaur is walking by, or whatever, the Prime Minister is outside, mm -hmm. riding a bicycle, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. The nuclear war, just let it burn. Don't worry about any what's going on. Forget it. Forget it. And be completely absorbed. And by the sadhana binivesh, then what will come? Sadhana binivesha ja bhav. So tomorrow morning we will remember this. God pray, Madam.